how did you get into doing the Batman animated series? Well, I am originally from New York, and I did a lot of theater in New York. I went through Juilliard, and I worked off-Broadway uh, doing a lot of the classics for Joseph Papp, and uh, went to eventually started doing Broadway. And uh, so that's really my background. It's more traditional uh, theater in New York. And then I moved to Los Angeles to do primetime television. I did a series called Tour of Duty about Vietnam. Um, I was the captain of the platoon. I was on Dynasty for a while. Um, I had a couple of sitcoms. I was kept pretty busy. But all through that time, I did uh, commercial voiceovers on the side. Because uh, that's what a lot of New York actors do to make money, because the theater doesn't pay very well. <laughs> So um, that's how I got into voice work, was really to make money on the side, doing commercial work. And then while I was in Los Angeles doing, um, I think it was during Tour of Duty, my agent sent me to meet the people at Warner Brothers about this new animated series they were doing. I had never done an animated series before. Um, this was the first one. And I walked in and uh, they said, are you familiar with Batman? And I said, well, just from the 60s sort of campy TV show. I, I don't, they said, you don't know The Dark Knight or any of that stuff? And I said, no, I'm really ignorant of it all. And they said, well, that might be a good thing because you don't have any preconceptions, you know? So they said, well, he uh, lives in the cave because he's avenging his parents' death and he's misunderstood and he leads a double life and he's a dark, brooding character and he lives to fight evil and I said, oh, you're doing Hamlet. And they said, what? I said, you're, you just described the plot for Hamlet. And then they said, well, no one's ever said that before. <laughs> so I said, well, just let me take a stab at, at what I think this brooding, dark um, cave dweller would sound like, you know? And um, I came up with this very bass, husky, um, sensuous kind of sound um, and I knew immediately that that was the right sound. It just felt right. And they said that too. They said the second that they heard me, they knew. And they had seen hundreds of people. So it was really a kind of a lucky um, merging of, of uh, events. I had this strong classical background uh, with a lot of vocal training. And they needed someone with a really rich, strong, uh, vocal range, you know, to do this broody, dark character. Um, they had been, been hearing a lot of TV actors come in and a lot of voiceover actors come in, and they just weren't getting the right brooding kind of quality that they were looking for. And I think what they really needed was a stage actor. And um, so it was just a coincidence, really, a very lucky coincidence. And it, it led to nine years of of work and um, and a wonderful experience for me and for them. They've they've really enjoyed working with me too, and I've loved working for them. So everyone, it's it's really benefited everybody. It's the best shop in Los Angeles. The Warner Brothers Batman team are the best artistic team put together for animation in Los Angeles um, in recent memory. Everyone in town says that this is the best shop around. And you can see it in the quality of the work. You, the audiences could see it the second it went on the air. Um, it just raised the standard in the business. I have friends who work over at Disney who said, you guys at Warner Brothers are kicking our asses because you are just raised the standard so high, none of us are going to be able to, re, you know, to meet it. Um, but that's what it's all about, right? Everyone doing the best work they can. So um, everyone involved in it has been really proud to be involved in it. And a nice side thing of doing this job is that because it got such a uh, reputation so fast for being a very classy show, uh, everyone wanted to be on it. Not just voice actors. Every TV actor, every film actor, every stage actor wanted to be on this show just because it got to be a thing to do. Like recently Ice-T came on to do a, a guest voice. And this guy makes millions of dollars doing rap. And I looked at him and I said, what are you doing here? He said, you don't need this job. He said, are you kidding? This is Batman. I'm doing Batman. This is, this is better than the money. <laughs> and you, you hear that from a lot of people who come in. Um, they want to do it because they want to do Batman. And uh, so I've worked with some of the best people in, in L.A.
on this show over these nine years. And that's been a really uh, a side benefit that I never anticipated. Because none, none of us knew it was going to take off the way it did, you know? So, so did you, uh, were, are you happy with the way Batman Beyond is going also? Well, that's really unique because I thought what made Batman, the original series, interesting was its film noir quality. You know, it was really, it was really that sort of 40s film noir, but done animated. And that was really unique, and it, and it gave it an artistic look. And it had that full symphony score. Um, they spent a lot of money on it. But I thought that's what made it special. Then they came up with Batman Beyond, which was really like MTV. Quick cuts, hard angles, rock, hard rock music. And I thought, oh, this is, this is not Batman. This, this is totally different. This, uh, I just, it, it struck me as too jarring. And then I saw the first footage come back, and it was beautiful. And I thought, wow, they, they were right. It's, it's going to appeal to a whole new group. And it did. It was the whole next generation. Um, you know, you don't think that after nine years there'll be another generation of, of, of people, you know. But suddenly there were all these teenagers who got turned on to Batman through Batman Beyond because it's done like an MTV video. And um, so the producers were right to do it. I, and I know a lot of the audience has been has been reluctant to embrace it and has been jarred by it because it's so unlike the old show. They should give it a chance because it's, in its own way, it's, it's just as good. It's just that it's different. You know, it's like a rock video. Batman Beyond is, I heard, is like the number two show on the WB on Saturday. Yeah. And, and it went right up as soon as it went on the air. But it's with a different crowd. It's not a lot of the old audience. So in a way, they've really covered their bases all over the workplace because they've got all that old audience from the original show, and now they've got all this new audience from Batman Beyond. Um, so between the two shows, they're just kicking butt, you know. So uh, how did you guys, uh, did you, were you satisfied with the Batman-Superman crossover as well? Yeah, I thought it was fun. I thought it was fun. Um, we have a pretty special um, rapport on the Batman set. Um, everyone who comes on, guests, always says it's the most fun they've ever had doing a recording. So um, I think we injected a little life into the Superman set, to tell you the truth. <laughs> and uh, did you, uh, is there anything you could tell us about the new Batman Beyond movie coming out soon? Well, only thing I can tell you is that there's a, there is a huge surprise in the movie that all of us are sworn to secrecy not to talk about. But you will be happy that you went to see this movie because it's real shocking. I know when we were recording it and I got to that page, I was like, this is incredible. It's very surprising. Um, and it's good, it's good, it's real good. And uh, do you have any other projects in the works right now? Well, I still do a lot of theater. I recently worked with Arthur Miller in New York uh, reviving a play of his off Broadway, and um, that's what I do. I go back to New York to do theater, but theater doesn't pay anything. So I go back out to LA and I do my voice work to make money. <laughs> this is Kevin Conroy, the voice of Batman on Batman the Animated Series. You're too tuned into Fantasticom.com, so don't even think about touching that dial.